thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Simon Quinn. I am the Director of Sales at Certipro. Also with me today is Linda Pinion from Sage. Uh, together, we're here to discuss Sage and Tax, which is a 100% cloud-based ERP and one of the leading accounting and financial management software uh, that is available. So as you'll see, Sage and Tax is versatile, it's easily customizable, and offers a fast implementation time. So it's an ideal accounting solution for companies who have outgrown QuickBooks. You know, while QuickBooks is a good accounting software, its functionality is very limited. You know, staying with QuickBooks for too long, really specifically after you start to scale your business, it's gonna limit your growth and hurt your bottom line. So first off, I want to talk about some general housekeeping here. Um, all attendees will be automatically muted. Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded and the recording will be sent to all attendees. Uh, if you have any questions during the webinar, please post them in the chat box and we'll try to answer them at the end during the Q&A session. Uh, if there are any questions that we don't get to, uh, I will follow up individually and uh, follow up after the webinar. So here is uh, the agenda that we'll run through today. Uh, first, we'll introduce uh, ourselves and I'll talk a little bit about CertiPro. Um, then we will discuss the limitations of QuickBooks and your options when it comes to financial management software. And then we're gonna take a look at the ad advantages of cloud computing and specifically Sage and Tact. So um, we'll see, Linda's gonna show us Sage and Tact in action and show you what a powerful tool that is. Uh, and as I said earlier, we'll finish up with some additional uh, Q&A and resources. So, uh, so as I said, I'm Simon Quinn with CertiPro. Uh, my focus is primarily on helping companies grow by implementing technological solutions that streamline operations, uh, increase automation and fix pain points or bottlenecks that hinder growth within a business. I've been involved um, in the B2B technology space for more than 20 years. Uh, five of those years have been specializing with uh, Sage ERP. So, real quick, an overview about CertiPro and who we are. So we've been in business since uh, 2012. Uh, we are headquartered in Los, uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we are a leader in uh, various Sage products. We also do uh, uh, different enhancements and customizations for Sage. Uh, specifically working with uh, uh, e-commerce. Uh, we work with the Magento e-commerce platform. Uh, we are a gold Sage certified development partner. Uh, we're also a Magento technology partner. So we have an internal team of Sage certified consultants as well as Magento certified developers. Um, we also work not only with Sage and Tax, but also Sage 100 Cloud, uh, Sage 500 and X3. And while you may not be familiar with these products, my um, the reason to bring this up is just to talk about how CertiPro is Sage centric. We only work with Sage, it's all we do. Uh, so when you work with CertiPro, you know that that's our entire focus. Any type of customizations or any type of enhancements that you might need that's not out of the box with Sage Intact, uh, we can definitely consult with you and get that job done. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Linda and she's gonna run through uh, her experience and then introduce all of us to Sage Intact. Thank you so much, Simon. And uh, I just wanna give a shout out to Allison. Allison has been behind the scenes and she's been helping along the way instrumental in pulling this together. So thank you, Allison, for all that you did to, to put this together today. You know, one of the things that I do on a frequent basis is to speak at events like this, and I'm happy to do this. I am very passionate about the Intact product. I started with Sage Intact at the time. It was Intact, so um, now Sage Intact, uh, but it started about 11 years ago. And I point that out to you because, you know, we've come a long way, as they say. We've uh, taken a, a, an organization that probably, when I started, had about 200 people. Uh, today, we have over 14,000 people within our organization. And it really has allowed us to not only grow our employee base, it's allowed us to grow our product. And today, when I talk to you about Sage Intact, as Simon said, this is maybe a little different than what you're using today, what you've experienced. This is a cloud-based solution. 
And so I want you to, to come away today with not only seeing the product, but I want you to understand the technology and the architecture that's behind this product. Now, I do things like this, uh, meaning I speak at different events, customer events, and certainly at our customer conference, which is coming up. But I also work with prospects and customers like yourself to understand better what your needs are, what's relevant to you, and make sure that we put together the right solution for your organization. So thank you again, Simon and Allison, for putting this together. Next slide. I'm pushing the button, but it does not seem, there we go, okay. All right, okay. <laughs> Sometimes those buttons just don't want to cooperate. And then sometimes they have a mind of their own. So thank you, Simon. So uh, Simon talked a little bit about QuickBooks at the beginning. I'm going to tell you a, a little backstory on QuickBooks. So when I first started at Intact, I knew nothing about QuickBooks. It was not a product that I had used. I came from uh, a different set of software solutions, and it was not something that I knew really anything about. However, we had a lot of people that were coming to us that were QuickBooks users. And I, just by working with them, learned quite a bit about QuickBooks. I still can't really say that I'm a QuickBooks user. However, uh, I learned that QuickBooks is really a great product. It's, it's a great solution for a lot of small businesses, uh, people that are uh, starting out, starting their business. QuickBooks is a easy choice for them to make. And it's one that works for some period of time. In fact, I saw a lot of companies that started as that um, mom and pop type of, of environment where started out small, had ideas that the business was going to grow. And in fact, it did grow. And perhaps they, you know, tried to continue with QuickBooks, started doing some things outside of QuickBooks in Excel or in other tools, and then realized that they really needed to look at another solution, that QuickBooks kind of had hit a brick wall and they needed to look at something that had more power to it and had more functionality. So again, if you're using QuickBooks today, QuickBooks was probably a great solution when you started. However, now that you've grown, you need to look at something that has more functionality and more growth potential for you. If you think about why QuickBooks maybe has hit that brick wall, again, I'll tell you another story. Several years ago, it's probably been, I'm gonna say five years ago, I was in charge of the prospect track at our customer conference. And one of the things that I was tasked to do was to get, uh, first of all, to lay out the program and the agenda but one of those topics was I wanted someone to basically give a, a testimonial. I wanted a QuickBooks user to talk about what it was like to go from QuickBooks to say Gentech. What was that experience like? Maybe some of the lessons learned and why they had actually made that move. So I called upon a, a company that's an entertainment company and this particular lady um, got up and, and just told a very interesting story about how she had really come from the Microsoft world, uh, thought that when she moved to this new company and found that they had QuickBooks, that she would probably uh, look at putting Microsoft in there as a solution because that's where her experience was and that's where she'd come from. As it turned out, she uh, looked to someone who, uh, introduced her to Sage Intact. And so she made the move from QuickBooks to Intact. Now, one of the things that Julie talked about was 
how difficult it was, <clears throat> excuse me, when she tried to do her consolidation. This company had multiple instances of QuickBooks. In fact, they had 11 instances. So every time she wanted to do something, she was logging in and logging out. She was uh, spending a lot of time at the end of the month. In her, in her case, she said she spent almost 40 hours pulling all of this data together to get that consolidated reporting that she needed for the stakeholders. So in her case, it was a very personal story about you know, how she was not investing time, she was spending time doing the manipulating that she had to do. So growth is certainly one of the aspects that people look at and they say, you know, we're outgrowing QuickBooks and it's because our company has grown, which is a great thing. And maybe we have multiple companies or multiple entities, as we call them in Intact, that we're trying to manage. And it's become pretty much a nightmare at the end of the month. There's some other reasons that you might be seeing that you're outgrowing QuickBooks. You know, one of the things that I mentioned was doing things outside of QuickBooks. So if you're finding that the reporting that's in QuickBooks is not strong enough or doesn't meet your needs, you may be doing things like pushing data out to Excel and then doing reports in Excel. You may be using some other tool to do your reporting. You may be um, doing more manual work outside of QuickBooks than what you should be doing. And so you, you really want to make sure that you know, you're, you're working smart instead of working hard and not doing that redundancy of, of activity. There's also a, a part that kind of lends into the technology, being able to access your information. So it's one thing to be in the office and, and need that information and sit down at your laptop or your desktop and get to your information. It's another when, you know, we as a mobile society, uh, a lot of us working remote today need access to our information. So we need to be in different places. We need to make sure that we can get to our data. And then one other piece to that is having the proper security. And while QuickBook has security and has permissioning, it's typically not as granular and detailed as you would like for it to be. Now, on the right-hand side of this, this view here, you see you know, the spreadsheets, you see the manual processes, you um, look at some of the lack in reporting and visibility. So we've talked about that and the security, but there's one piece here that I wanna make sure that, that you walk away with as well, and that's the month end close time. I'm gonna show you some things today in Intact that will help you not only gather that information faster and in a better way, but also give you a, a couple of tricks and tips, if you will, that will help you get that close done faster. And who doesn't wanna have their close done faster? I mean, that's what it's really all about is making sure that you have the information, it's accurate, and that you can do that close within let's say the first five to seven business days. I talked to some people today who um, it takes them 20, 30 days to close their books. And that's not an acceptable length of time. So those are some of the reasons and a little bit of the backstory of what it means to outgrow QuickBooks. Now, what we found that QuickBooks users need, um, obviously you need to be able to address the key requirements in your organization. What I need in my business is different than what Simon needs in his. But at the end of the day, uh, what Simon and I both need is we need a solution that fits our business model. So Sage Intact has a business model as well. And our model is called best in class. I'm going to educate you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. What best in class says is you get the freedom to choose whatever 
solution meets your requirements best. So as an example, you may be using some things other than QuickBooks today. You may have another piece of software that uh, is maybe handling your customer relationship management. I'll point to uh, Salesforce is, is one of the top CRM solutions. Microsoft CRM is another, Sugar CRM. You may be using a CRM tool that you are happy with today and you don't want to replace it. You want to keep it, but there may be information in that system that you want over in your financial solution as well. So that's really what our model is about. It's a best in class model. That means you can keep your CRM system. We're going to be your financial hub. We're going to be that strong financial solution in the middle, and we're going to cohabitate. We're gonna allow you to move that information over into Sage Intact for reporting. Moving that information over obviously means that you wanna be able to report on it. You wanna to get to that information, you wanna see it, you wanna make sure that it's accurate, that it's real time. And so we're gonna do that starting with a role-based dashboard. And that's where we're gonna to start today when we move into software. You also need the ability to be flexible. Today, you know how your business operates. In six months, you may acquire another company, you may add another business line, you may wanna make some changes and you don't wanna to have to go back and reevaluate software. You wanna be able to use the software that you choose today for many years to come. I like to say you want the, the solution to be uh, the solution today, tomorrow, and for a long time in the future. The only way that you can do that is to choose a solution that allows you to be flexible. And flexible means configurable. That means that you're in jello, you're not in concrete. That means that when your process changes, we're gonna allow you to change it, reconfigure it without re-implementing, without starting over, without going back and saying, well, you know what? The solution doesn't work, so we're going to have to go find a new solution. That's what we're going to eliminate for you. We're going to give you the flexibility and at the same time, give you the control that you need. We're also going to provide to you superior return on investment. So we're going to look at the total cost of ownership. And if you have not really educated yourself on cloud, this is something that Simon and his team would love to sit down and discuss with you because there is a total cost of ownership. And what, what Simon and team are going to do is they're going to explain and articulate what the value is by moving to Sage Intact. And that value has to outweigh the switching cost. Now, whether you're coming from QuickBooks or you're coming from something else, there's always a cost to switch even if you're doing it on paper and pencil, there's a cost for you to move from that model to Sage Intact. So that cost compares to the value that you derive from making that move to Sage Intact. And, and what Simon will, <clears throat> excuse me, outline for you is what is that value? And at the same time, he'll identify what is the total cost of ownership for you. Now, Serta Pro has done lots of implementations. As Simon said, they are sage uh, today, tomorrow, and for you know many days and months and years to come. So they've got a proven path. They're going to come out with a project manager and a plan and the kickoff meeting, and they're going to help you define and design how you choose to use Sage Intact. So you're in good hands with that team and they're gonna help you to be successful. What we're also going to do from a publisher standpoint, if you think of, of Sage Intact as the publisher here, we are also gonna back that up with a buy with confidence agreement. And this is something that's part of every one of our subscriptions, something that you can look at on the website. Simon and his team can certainly share it with you, but that guarantees that if you have integrations 
that are integrating into Sage Intact that when we have our updates and we have them four times a year, so we have quarterly updates, that we guarantee those integrations will not break when we have those quarterly updates. I don't know of anybody else in the industry that makes that commitment to you. It's called the buy with confidence agreement. So make sure that you check that out in your discussions with uh, Simon and his team. <clears throat> so I'm gonna spend uh, just a few minutes on this slide. It, there's a lot of information on the slide, but it's a little bit more background on, on the Sage Intact product. It, it was actually released or written, started out in 1999. So we're not a new solution. Uh, it's been a native cloud solution from the get-go, the first line of code. In fact, the name Intact comes from internet accounting. So back in 1999, our architects had this vision of creating a multi-dimensional accounting solution and it would be delivered via the web and only the web. And most of the people that have been instrumental in this entire uh, plan and this entire rollout from the beginning are CPAs. So this is a solution that is built by accountants for accountants. And even today, you'll find that many of our product development folks uh, many of our um, team members, not just solution consultants like myself, even salespeople, uh, people in our implementation area, people uh, in our marketing area, a lot of those people are degreed accounting people. So we really, that is our core competency is accounting. We have the ability to integrate our solution into other solutions. That's that best in class model that I talked about. And if you look at the, the diagram that's on the right-hand side of the screen, think about you know, what's in that bottom left-hand corner is the core financials. So this is what you look at as being that core bundle. So if you hear me say core bundle, or if Simon refers to it as the core bundle, this is your basic accounting solution. It's general ledger, it's order management, it's purchasing, it's reporting and dashboards and cash management. Additionally, based on your requirements, so you can think of it as an optional thing, you look at some additional modules. If you're someone who wants advanced budgeting and planning, or if you're a project-based company and you need project accounting, Maybe you're someone who is in distribution and you need full-blown inventory. Perhaps you're someone who is a subscription-based business like a software company. If you are billing your customers based on a subscription, if you need to be ASC 606 compliant, then you look at contract subscription billing. Those are additional optional modules that complement that core bundle. At the top, what you see are some of the industry specific solutions. And these are solutions that uh, we have done very well in. They're certainly not all of the areas that we play, but if you look at some of these, healthcare as an example, you know, healthcare has, has really taken off in the last five years. We're one of the very few solutions that is HIPAA compliant. So if that's something that you uh, maybe feel that you need or you anticipate that you'll need that in the future, then you absolutely want to look at Sage Intact. If you're a franchise type of organization, the things that are important to franchise, multi-entity. Uh, entity is the same thing as company. So having the ability to do multi-company financials, inner entity or inner company transactions, that's huge if you're a franchise. If you're a franchise, you may be using a point of sale system that you need integrated into Sage Intact. Again, that's our model. Our model is to help you protect the software that you've already invested in and you know and love, to protect that, at the same time, integrate that over into our financial engine. 
And of course, you know, nonprofit. Nonprofit is a very large vertical for us. If you are an association, if you're a church, if you're a school, uh, you know that you have some different compliance issues. You know that your reporting's different. Uh, you know that you have the need for true fund accounting. I always say NFP stands for nice, fun people. We have a large customer base in our not-for-profit area. About 35% of our install base is coming from nonprofit. So if that's the area that you need focus, Sage Intact is the right place to, to look for nonprofit solutions. So just a little bit of tooting our own horn here. You know, one of the things that I, I like to talk about is some of the accolades, and, and this is certainly not all of them, but three important ones, <clears throat> excuse me, three important ones to us. The first one here <clears throat> is the AICPA. And the AICPA is the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. They're the folks that know probably more about accounting than, than all of us put together. When I started at Intact, we had that preferred provider recommendation from the AICPA. So that's been many years ago that that happened. And it, it's not a one and done. So it's not something that once you achieve it, you have it forever and always. I believe it's about every five years that they go back and they reevaluate. And I'm happy to say that we've had it continuously since I've been on board. And this means that they have outlined us as the best place to go as far as a financial management solution in the cloud. And we're the only software company that they have given this preferred provider accolade to. The one in the middle is one that you may not be familiar with. It's called the G2 crowd, G as in good to the number two crowd. If you're not familiar with it, you can go out and you can um, Google it. You can learn more about the G2 crowd, but here's the net of it. It's an organization that allows you as a user to submit a review on a product. So you can log in and you can enter your review on Sage Intact or whatever accounting solution you're using. And they give awards, several different categories of awards every year. And they give them in the spring and the fall. So as recent as spring 2020, we were given the leader in the customer satisfaction area as being number one. So again, if you wanna go out there and take a look at it, it's g2crowd.com. And then the last one here uh, is around the analyst. And a, a lot of times people uh, don't, don't adhere and don't uh, read the analyst reviews, but I point this out because this is an important one for us. It's from Gartner and Gartner has given us the um, recommendation that we are the leader in visionary in cloud financial management. And when I think about this, I kind of look at visionary as innovation. You know, we're looking to the future. We're looking to always continuously improve what we're doing today. We're listening to our customer base. We're, we're looking at what's happening in the different verticals. So we're we're industry uh, verticalized. We're, we're paying attention to what's important in nonprofit versus what's important in healthcare. But we have a vision. We have a plan. We know where we're going. And uh, we review that with our customer base at our customer meetup. So you always know uh, what the vision is and what the plan is for Sage Intact. So visionary I believe is very important to the success of your company. 
So this is what you've been waiting for, and we're going to jump right in. But before we do, let me just give you a little bit about the roadmap here. So I'm going to start out with visibility. And in that section, I'm going to start with role-based dashboards. So uh, we'll take a tour of how to access your information. I'm going to introduce you to the financial report writer. I'm going to talk to you about uh, some of the building foundational components, things like dimensions and account groups. And you're gonna see how powerful the reporting is in Sage Intact. And I'm gonna do that a lot through the role-based dashboards. The second area that I'm gonna to go to is flexibility. And, you know, again, you don't wanna select something that's gonna box you in a corner. When you make a software evaluation, that's not an easy process it can be very grueling. And when you get done with it and you make your selection and you implement, you certainly don't wanna go back through that in the next year or two. That's not something that uh, is on your to-do list. So we wanna make sure that you have a solution that grows with you, that's scalable, that's easy for you to navigate, easy for you to move around, easy for your um, company and for your individuals to ramp. You know, there's always a, a time that you're getting up to speed. We want to make sure that the help is there, that you have the information that you need at your fingertips and that we can offer you some best practices. And then the third area is automation. And there's one thing that we know that all controllers and CFOs are interested in, and that is streamlining and automating processes. And so today I'm going to focus on how can you do that in Sage Intact? How can you automate processes that are somewhat tactical, that are repeatable? How can we make those faster? How can we improve the controls? Uh, perhaps you are not using workflows today that give you approval capability, but you'd like to. So I'm gonna introduce that to you. And then I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about artificial intelligence because AI is really where everyone's going. Uh, this is the view that everyone wants to see that AI is what, what helps, um, the technology helps you work smarter and not work harder. Let the technology work for you and let it look at the patterns in the data. And we already have that functionality and that capability in play in Sage Intact. So I definitely wanna make sure that you hear about that today. So now Simon, if you will let me share my screen. That's perfect. We're gonna go ahead and jump into Sage Intact. And before I do that, um, let me just make sure that you can see my screen. Okay, Simon? Yes, we can see your screen. Um, okay. Yep. Okay. All right, so uh, let me hide this little control panel up here. That will help as well. So now we have a little bit more real estate up there at the top. All right, so to begin with, for some of you, you may or may not have seen Sage Intact before. So I always like to go through just a little bit of the user experience. Um, the first thing I would tell you is I have logged into an environment that's managing multiple entities. And when I say entity, again, just to remind you, that's the same thing as company. So today I am managing three different companies in this one instance of Sage Intact. So 100, 200, 300 are my companies that I'm managing. I've logged in as Emma, she's my controller. I've also logged in as an employee user and I'll introduce you to her in just a moment. I've landed on my controller dashboard, and this is the way that I've set my preferences up. So I prefer when I log in to log in to, and land on this screen. Before we get into the details of the dashboard, I'm gonna show you quickly how you can navigate. And always interesting because people wanna know, is it hard to move around? So you're probably used to having some menus that you can drive from. We have menu systems as well. So I've accessed the purchasing area and you can see that the task and activities and reports are here. 
click on any of these options, it'll take you right into the software. So that's one way to navigate. Another way to navigate is with what we call the process map. And every one of our applications has one of these maps. What's nice about this is it shows you in the middle swim lane, the best business practice. And this best business practice is an, a sample of a business process flow. It may not be your business process flow, but we're gonna follow this process today. And I'll show you how this works and how you can personalize and configure this to the way you choose to use it. Again, clicking on one of these icons takes you right in to that area of the software. The third way to navigate, and this is probably my favorite, is the bookmarks. The bookmarked menu is like when you surf the web and you save a favorite. Well, here you'll bookmark a page and it will start building out a menu for you. So these menu options, by clicking on them, it would take me right into the software. Now, what's also nice is this is drag and drop, so I can just drag things around and create a menu stream. I can change the description. So if I want to edit this, I can change it to something else. Or if I want to start all over, I can just throw it in the trash can and I can start creating a new bookmarked menu. So this is how you'll see me drive a little bit today is from that bookmarked menu. But now let's come back to our dashboard. And before I go into my controller dashboard, I wanna point out that there are a lot of dashboards in my environment here. And some of these are role-based, some of them are functional-based. So in the role-based, you see things like an AP manager or a customer service rep or the CFO. In the operational area, you see an inventory, a purchasing, a sales, or a warehouse. So these are different dashboards that you create as a business user. So whatever is important to you in a particular area, think of a dashboard as a container. It's going to allow you to containerize information, put it in one place, and make it easy to get to. So let's come back to our controller dashboard. And I'm gonna go back to my story about the lady named Julie who said she had 11 instances of QuickBooks and it took her almost 40 hours to put together a consolidated report because she had to take all 11 instances and mush them together to make that consolidated reporting. When I logged in here as Emma, I pointed out to you that I was managing three companies. When I land here on my dashboard, all of this information on this dashboard, these boxes here, the reports, all of the views that you see, all of these views are a consolidated view. This $53,000 of general and administrative expenses is across all three of those companies. So that's a consolidated number. The AR is a consolidated number. So I don't have to invest 40 hours to combine those three entities together because I already have a consolidated view. Now, as the controller, I may not wanna look at the consolidated view. I may wanna just look at one, just one of those companies. And to do that, I'm gonna use my dashboard filters. And I'm gonna filter this dashboard down to just one entity. So I've chosen entity 100 and you notice that the dashboard represented itself, but the numbers have changed. They've changed because of the filtering. Now the filters, there can actually be three up to three on the dashboard. I've chosen the entity or the location as one, items is another and projects is another. Each one of these filters is what we call a dimension. Now, being a QuickBooks user, I know that you know that you uh, have a dimension in QuickBooks, it's called class. And we have the class dimension as well. However, we have 12 predefined dimensions in Sage Intact, not one, but 12. And these three are three of those 12. 
Now, some of those are with the core bundle and some of them come by way of subscription. So as an example, I have project accounting turned on, subscribed to here. And so I have a dimension for project. So if you weren't subscribed to project accounting, you would not have that project dimension. But at a minimum, you have seven predefined dimensions with the core bundle. And then you have optionally five additional dimensions that come based on subscription. We use those dimensions for reporting and for filtering the data. And you're gonna see that as we go through some of the uh, pieces of this dashboard. For now, I'm gonna put us back to that consolidated view. I would point out too that there is a way for you to filter as of a certain date. So I have most of my demo data in the year 2018. So I have this filtered to 12-31-2018. So thinking about what's important to the controller, you know, one of the things that I wanna see is some quick business insight. And one of the ways to see that is through what we call performance cards. And that's what these boxes are at the top of my screen. Each one of these has the ability to compare to a previous period or to a budget. It also has the ability to have some visual indicators. So making sure that you can see that visual very quick, you can see expenses are, are going fine, that assets are going fine, that the cash is going up, and that's a good thing. If I wanna know more about those expenses, I can drill into that information and I can see that comparison. In my case, it's actual versus a master budget. I can also see that in office supplies specifically, I've already blown it. I've already gone past the budget. So if I wanna know more about that, I can drill into that information and I will drill in to the general ledger report. Now there's a lot of information on this screen. I'll share a few key uh, areas that you might wanna take note of because this is all information that's at your fingertips. So I can see that this is a bill. This I'm gonna pick out one of these transactions. This is a bill from neighborhood printers and stationery. So this is an AP bill, something I bought. I've posted it and it's from neighborhood. I've also tagged it to a specific location and a department. Department is one of those dimensions, as is vendor. So vendor is a dimension as well. I posted it and it posted in the AP journal. So you will have the ability to define multiple journals and then direct your transactions to post in specific journals. So this thousand dollars is posted in my AP journal. And if I wanna know more about it, I can drill on that individual transaction. Now here I have a lot more information. It's dropped me right into accounts payable. I can see that this was a bill for $1,000. I've paid it. And I can drill into the check that paid this invoice. Additionally, I can come down and I can see that I had an attachment. So you can attach pictures and documents. You can drag and drop from your desktop right to the transaction. You can then go in and look at the attachment that's on this record. So I've just attached a picture here of a brochure. And then when I look at how I've coded this transaction, I've coded it to office supplies. I've tagged it to that department and location. And if I chose to, I could also tag it to some additional dimensions. So channel, channel is actually the class dimension and I changed the name of it. So I could have tagged it to channel, customer, item, project, warehouse, or employee. So these are all additional dimensions that I could have tagged this transaction to. Now this allows me to really get very granular in telling the story of the transaction. So I know that it was to neighborhood printer. I know that it was for some office supplies. I've got a picture of the brochure that I was ordering. And I've also got the department and the location that are tagged to this transaction. And that tells the story of the transaction. 
So that's what I think about dimensions. I think they tell the story of the transaction. So everything that you see here that's in blue has that drill down capability. So anything that I wanna know the details of, I can see it just by drilling into it. And you'll notice as I go through today, there are lots of different buttons. You can print things, you can push it out to Excel, you can uh, send emails, <coughs> excuse me. You can um, put things out on your dashboard. So you're gonna see a lot of different buttons as I go through some of these screens today. So coming back to the dashboard, all of these performance cards work the same way as the GNA expenses. Now, one of the other things that the controller likes to look at is financial reports. Always important for the controller to see how you're tracking, but then be able to see that in a financial statement. Now, the first thing that comes up for me is the ability to filter the data. And I want you to notice that on this screen, department all the way down to warehouse, those are all dimensions. So I can take that data and I can filter it by one or more of those dimensions. I'm going to look at it in its entirety first. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see a financial report that I created with the financial report writer. You're going to see all three companies side by side. And then you see my consolidated column. What I also can do is drill into this. So I'm going to drill into the revenue and I can see my revenue is broken out by three product groupings. And as I look at this data, I can then drill in to a specific area. I lo I'm looking at revenue in product group one. And again, I see the detail. So now I'm on the revenue side as opposed to the expense side. Now I see the customer invoice and I see that it's posted to the AR journal. And if I drill into that, I'm gonna see what this $65,000 is all about. So it's a $65,000 invoice. There's been a payment of $11,000. I can drill into that payment. <clears throat> I can also see that there is an attachment here. So again, I've got an attachment on this transaction. I can see where I coded it to the revenue. What I also have the ability to do is to look at the source transaction. So now I'm looking at the sales invoice. And from here, I can see the individual item that I have sold my customer. So this is a security system. I own an alarm company. So you're going to see security systems and accessories and cameras and such. This is the item that I sold, the description. I have tagged this to a specific, specific channel because I have categorized my selling into commercial and residential and retail. I sold it out of a particular warehouse and location and I tagged it to my sales department. This allows me to see all of the detail of what I sold to that customer. What I also have is the accounting details. So for those of you who are interested in how does it know what to do with the numbers and where to post things, this is the posting detail. So I have the AR invoice here, the sales invoice, plus I have the subledger posting down here. So I know exactly how the transaction was posted. I also have the history tab and the history tab shows me the complete flow of this transaction. So it started as a sales order, it went to a shipping document and then to a sales invoice. Additionally, I have the payment details. So again, if I'm talking to the customer on the phone and they want to know, did, did I receive their payment? I have all that information here in the posting details and in the posted payment details. So whether you're talking to somebody inside your organization or you're talking to your customer, you have a history tab, you have posting details, and you have payment details. All of this information right at your fingertips. And don't forget, I got to this from the dashboard. So that's one way to, to look at your data. Now let's take another view of it. Let's just say that I don't wanna look at revenue as one number or by product category. I wanna look at the individual items that I'm selling. 
So based on the fact that I have permissions, I'm gonna go into edit mode into the financial report writer. It's dropped me right into the report writer. Uh, one of the things that I talked about was, you know, having that ability to learn and have your help at your fingertips. It might be Friday night, eight o'clock. You don't remember how to create a report. So now you click on the question mark and you've got online help right at your fingertips, cookbook style. It's going to help you go in and create a report. In this case, I've already created this report. It's that profit and loss report. And what's helped me create it and create it quickly is something we call account groups. And account groups allow me to create any type of report that I choose to. They do just what it says. They group accounts together for reporting purposes. I have an account group here called net income and behind that are all of the accounts in the chart that make up net income. Watch what happens when I add an additional account group here called assets. We're going to add that to the to the fold and then we're going to come in and we're going to preview that report again. So this is the same report that we looked at earlier down to net income, but notice I have all of these rows or lines for assets now, and that's because I added the asset group as an account group. That's how easy it is for you to change a statement, to add those additional rows, and to create any kind of statement that you choose to utilizing account groups. It's just as easy for me to come in and say, I want the assets to be before net income. So I just flip that to the top. Or if I want to, I can say, you know what? I don't want the assets on there at all. Just take those off of that format and put myself back to the way I was when I started. Assets, I didn't get rid of them. I just got rid of that grouping for this particular format. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can change the level of detail. And this is where those dimensions come back in. So remember when I showed you the report the first time, it just gave me the numbers for revenue broken out into those product category one, two, and three. Now I can use the dimensions and I can say, show me the detail, but expand it by a dimension. And I've, just, I've chosen item here. So now let's come in and preview the report. And what you see now, instead of seeing revenue, product one, two, three, you see all of the individual items that I have sold. And it's broken it out across my companies. So just by making that one little switch in how you want to see the detail, I now have a different view on my report. That's how easy it is to get that level of detail. So we'll move that back to that summary and put ourselves back the way we were. Now, the other area was the columns. Remember I showed you the report and I said, I've got a column for each one of my companies and then I've got a consolidated column. So you'll notice here I only have one column. Well, how did it know to break out those companies, those entities into separate columns? Well, it knew to do that because I said expand by locations. So that made each column a separate location. I can change this as well. So let's just say that I changed that to customers. And so now when I look at this report, instead of having locations up here, each one of my customers is a column. So that's how easy it is for me to change the look and feel of a report. And I've done this on the fly and I've done it because I had permission to do it. So this is a permission thing that you would need permission to edit the financial reports in order to make that change. So understanding that you can add columns, you can change columns, you can move them around, you have all of that flexibility. You also can create computations. You can set default filters. You can change the format, so the colors and the fonts. You can also set permissions for these reports. So you control who has access, not only to the dashboards, 
but who has access to the reports? And then the next steps, and I always like to show this because this is helpful for uh, one of those things around closing the end of the month, uh, I'm gonna talk about in just a minute is having all, everything at your fingertips. So when I create this report, I may wanna immediately put it out to the dashboard or to help me at month end, I may wanna put it into what we call the scheduler. So if I want this report or a group of reports to automatically get sent out at the end of the month, I push them out to the intact scheduler with a start and end date, a frequency and a delivery list. And then intact will take care of sending those reports out automatically. So you don't have to sit there and run reports and then create emails and attach report. You don't have to do any of that. All of that is going to be sent automatically without you having to do anything. So that's the financial report writer and a little bit about the financial report writer. It's what's created all of these different reports that you see on the controller dashboard. Now, when it comes to closing out the month, I wanna show you a couple things that I think could be helpful to you. Uh, one is the working checklist. So I've set up a checklist for end of month processing. And um, that end of month processing allows me to have a checklist of the steps that I need to do at the end of the month to make sure that I complete everything and I get everything done. Now, what's even more important is assigning tasks to individuals on that checklist. So um, on the end of month checklist, I need to execute and run a trial balance. I need to do some things in my fixed asset master. So I've set up these activities as assignments and I've assigned them to individual people. They will get individual emails letting them know that they have been assigned those tasks. So now I can see exactly where I'm at from a task perspective, from an assignment perspective, and I can have multiple checklists. The other piece that I think is helpful is understanding what has been closed. So um, one of the things that people always wanna know is how do I close the books in Sage Intact? You can close them individually by entity, or you can close them in mass. So you can say, I wanna close all of my entities. You also close by application. So you close the subsystems first, and then you close the ledger. But it's helpful to know what's been closed and what hasn't been closed. So we have this view here called close through summary, and that tells you by entity, by application, whether or not it's been closed. So again, things to help you with your month end. And then the last thing I wanna share on the dashboards is the Sage Intact Collaborate. And Collaborate is the social media layer within Sage Intact. And this allows you to communicate with other Intact users about a specific transaction. So let me show you how this works. I'm gonna click on this AP bill here. This is a bill that came from neighborhood printers and the bill has uh, come through our AP system. We've entered that bill. And you'll see that there is a conversation down here between Emma, Emma's our controller, and Nikki's our employee. So the conversation is about the coding on this bill. Uh, the conversation is this is not coded correctly. Can you update and repost? So if you have a question about a transaction, Today, you probably would send an email or you'd call someone. If you're in Sage Intact, you can enter that conversation in this dialog box. And if you enter the conversation here and share it, that, that information is gonna go right to that person or to that group of people. So in this case, I'd be sending a message to Nikki Tesla. And once I share it, Nikki's gonna get notification that she has a message in her collaboration feed. So she's gonna see a little pop-up that's gonna alert her that she has a message. And then if she has that defined on her dashboard like I do, she'd see it in that collaboration feed 
here on her dashboard. What she would also have is that hyperlink to that transaction. So this could be an AP bill, it could be an AR invoice, it could be a journal entry, it could be any transaction. And giving you that hyperlink allows you to get right back to that transaction and see all of the details of what's going on. So this is not going to eliminate all of your emails and your phone calls. However, it's going to drastically reduce them. And it's also gonna give you the ability to self-document your transactions. And the auditors absolutely love that. So that's a little bit about reporting and dashboarding and access to information. The next area that I wanna to go to is the company overview. And I wanna stop here for just a minute because I wanna to talk to you about three different areas. The first one is your users. In QuickBooks today, you have the ability to set up permissions. However, your permissions are not all that granular. And in Sage Intact, those permissions will be very granular. So by individual, you'll be able to say what applications they can get into. And then within an application, you're gonna be able to set very granular permissioning. So it's more than just, can you see it? It's can you add something? Can you print it? Can you void it? Um, in the area of AP bills, you have permission to reverse a transaction or not, to reclassify or not. So again, these are very granular type permissioning, much more so than what you have today in QuickBooks. Additionally, I said that you could set up as many entities as you choose to. So here are my three entities. However, you also have the ability to set up locations. And so underneath those entities or companies, you might have locations and those locations are then tagged or tied to an entity. Simple way to think about this is parent-child. My parent here is entity 100. And under that parent, I have three children, these three locations. What that allows me to do is to see how each location is performing and then also to have them roll up to that parent company or entity. So you can have as many locations as you choose to, you can have as many entities as you choose to, and then you connect them in a parent-child type of environment. And then the other piece that I wanna talk about is importing data. And this is something that uh, we've done something to help you. We've created templates uh, that will allow you to populate the template and upload data through a CSV upload very quickly. And this also is an area where you will be able to configure each one of your applications. So one of the things that I would point out to you is every application you will configure to the way you choose to use it. So let's just say as an example, Simon and I both have different um, companies. He's using Sage Intact, I'm using Sage Intact. I want my accounts payable to work a little different than what he does. So I can configure it the way I choose to use it. And in these configurations, this is where you're gonna turn on some functionality or maybe turn off functionality. Maybe I want to use credit limits, but Simon doesn't want to when in, in his AP environment. That's perfectly fine. I also have the ability to define what dimensions I wanna use in AP. I can also personalize how I wanna use workflow approvals, or maybe I don't wanna use workflow approvals. And then I also can define how I want my aging buckets to be set up. So those are some of the things that you can do to personalize and configure an application to how you want to use it. That's all about that flexibility and control that we talked about. Now, the next place that I wanna to go to is to our purchasing area. And I go here because this is an area that a lot of companies use a hybrid system. They, they enter purchase orders for some things and other things they, 
they enter straight into AP. I'm going to show you a, a process that speaks to automation, speaks to control and flexibility. And I'm going to do this by utilizing two different users. I'm going to follow this process here. I'm going to start by entering a purchase requisition. I'm going to submit that for approval. Once it's approved, I'm going to convert it, not re-enter it. I'm going to convert it to a purchase order. I'm going to go through a receiving step. And then I'm going to go through a matching step with my vendor invoice. Now, the twist here is I'm going to do this as my employee user. So I'm going to start out as Nikki Tesla. And here's Nikki. Nikki has a different dashboard. So you can see that she's my employee user. She has very limited permissioning. So you can see she doesn't have access to everything. In fact, when she goes into purchasing, the only thing that Nikki can do is enter a purchase requisition. And that's where our story is going to start by looking at a purchase requisition. And Nikki's already entered it, but she saved it in a draft mode. So let's come back into that transaction. That's a great way to enter something, save it as a draft, and then come back to it. Maybe you had to go to lunch or to go to a meeting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this requisition and we're just going to review it. It's for some office supplies and it's for $555. And we're going to go ahead and submit this. And when we submit this, it's going to give us a warning because we've got some budgeting turned on, but it's just a warning. We're going to go ahead and say, yes, it's okay. Go ahead and send this requisition out to get it approved. The approval is going to be sent to Emma and Emma happens to be Nikki's manager. Now, what I've done for Emma is I've set up a role-based dashboard that has all of the workflow approvals on it. So here in purchasing, Emma's going to look at the transaction that needs to be looked at and either approved or declined. So if I was Emma, I'd want to view this. So here's the requisition that Nikki submitted. And you can see in the history tab that there is an approval history. So I can see if there's anyone else that needs to approve it. Now, this is a simple approval. It could be very detailed. It could even be based on a value amount. And there's six different levels of values that you can set up. After looking at this, Nikki and uh, Emma determines that Nikki's requisition is available to approve. So she's going to go ahead and approve it. And once this gets approved, Nikki's going to get an email that lets her know that her requisition has in fact been approved. Once that's been approved, we're going to take that requisition to the next level. So let's put on our purchasing hat. Let's come into that requisition and let's convert it to a purchase order. Converting it, everything comes over from the requisition, no re-entering of data, including the attachment. And we can see all of the details here. We'll go ahead and post that, get it sent out to neighborhood. Once neighborhood gets it, they're going to get those brochures and send them to us. And we're going to receive those in. So we're going to have that receiving update. We'll post that receiving. And then a few days later, our accounting team is going to get the vendor invoice. And now when they get that vendor invoice, they're going to make sure they got billed correctly and they're going to enter a vendor document number. Once we get that posted up, We've got the complete history of what happened from requisition to purchase order to receiver to vendor invoice. Every step in the process, user date and time stamped. So we have a complete history of this process. So that history tab is there for you to talk to your vendor about what's going on or, or to look at it for someone internally. Once a payment is made, we'll have the payment details showing up as well. So that gives us a complete view of our purchasing, walking through that complete business process, documenting everything, and it's an automated process. No re-entering of data. 
So I know that we've spent a lot of time today in looking at Sage Intact as a solution. We've covered visibility and access to information. We've looked at dashboards and reporting. Uh, we learned a lot about how it's flexible and configurable. And we also just finished up by looking at an automated business process. So now I'm going to ask Simon to take it back so we can open it up for some Q&A. So Simon, I'll let you um, take it back and we'll open it up. I think Allison is monitoring our chat. Sounds good, Linda. Thanks so much for that. That was really great. Every time we go through one of these, it just reinforces how you know, simple the user interface is, um, just how the flow works. Um, the conversations that I have with users reflects exactly what you saw today. Um, just the ease of use, uh, it's so much different. Um, such a great, powerful tool. Um, thanks again, Linda, really great. You're so welcome. yeah, let's move into, um, let me share my screen here. There we go. I think you need to stop sharing your screen, Linda. Let me see if I can do that. I I am not sharing. Okay. I'm viewing Linda's screen. Uh oh. There we go. I think I got it back. Do I? Okay. Did you get it? No, I'm still viewing your screen. Okay. So there is. Um, down on the bottom, it says share screen. Yeah, so um, it's not letting me turn loose of it. Allison, can you uh, see if you can take back the, as the owner of this, you might be able to take it back? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah, it's not letting me uh, let go of it. It's just wanting me to share it again, and I don't want to share it again. That's always something. <laughs> Technology is our friend until it's not. It's okay. If we can't figure this out, we can still go ahead and uh, take questions. Yeah, we can still. Awesome. Yeah, we can still take the questions. So, Austin, if there's a question to be read, we'll take it. All right, there we go. So, this I should be sharing now, so everyone should be seeing um, our what's next slide. And yeah, we did have a few questions that were sent in directly to the panelists. The first was, what is the implementation time for most companies to go live with Sage Intact? So I would tell you that most of the time uh, what happens is based on, uh, again, what, what your requirements are, uh, a general rule of thumb is eight to 12 weeks. Now, in that eight to 12 weeks, lots of things are gonna happen. And um, Simon and team are gonna come out. They're going to define and design an overall project plan with you. They're gonna make sure that you know everything that needs to be done. Uh, there's some things that can run in parallel. So you may have different groups of people working on different things, but they'll lay out a whole plan of, you know, here's where we're gonna start. Here's how it's gonna be rolled out. There will be touch points and checkpoints along the way. They're going to talk to you about how you're going to get your data in from QuickBooks. You know, how is that going to happen? Um, how you're going to do some of your testing and your, your scripting, if you will, to make sure that everybody gets ramped and educated on how to use the, the product. Uh, it may be a good time for you to review some of your business processes. However, as a rule, eight to 12 weeks is about the time frame that it takes to implement. All right, that sounds good. And so just as a reminder, if anybody has any follow-up questions, you can ping those to us as well. And if we can't handle any of them during the call, we'll follow up later individually. Uh, we did have a second question that came in. How will Sage Intact Multi-Entity help us drive consistency across our organization? So there's a couple things that I wanna make sure you walk away with today. First of all, you can set up, create 
as many entities or companies as you choose to. When you're looking at that from a QuickBooks perspective, remember that you don't need to log in and log out. You have one instance of Sage Intact. All of those companies are in that one instance. Based on permission, you can transact across those entities without logging in and logging out. As you saw with Nikki, Nikki could only transact in one entity, and that was Entity 100. She didn't get to choose. She, her permissionings dictated where she could actually transact. So that, that becomes very important for you to make sure that people have access to the right areas. And then it also, on the flip side, it allows you to not have to do that manual consolidation of everything because it's a consolidated view, as you saw on my dashboard. It also allows you to break it apart and to see it individually. So you're gonna save a huge amount of time if you are a multi-entity type of company today. If you're a single company today, but you have a growth pattern that says in the next you know, 12 to 18 months, you're gonna be looking at adding an additional company, then Sage Intact is a very scalable product. So you can start out with just using what you need and then you can grow to add those additional entities. All right. And then we had another question. We have a couple questions about multiple entities, actually. Uh, so another one that came in is how can you, or how many entities can you manage in Sage Intact and how long does it take to set up a new one? So unlimited entities, set up as many entities as you choose to. And remember, there's that hierarchy. So you have entity and then you have location. And you can set up as many locations as you choose to and link those to the entities. As far as the time it takes to set up an entity, I can set up a new entity in less than a minute. It's very easy. There's, uh, I believe, three pieces of information that you need. You need an ID, a description, and you need the identification number. So you need three pieces of information to set up a new entity. So less than a minute, you can create a new entity. And the beauty of that multi-entity also is that you're sharing information. So you're sharing a chart of accounts. You only have to set up one chart of accounts. You share it across all of those companies. You only have to set up one customer master and one vendor master, and you can share that across all of your entities as well. So there's a lot of benefits, a lot of time saving, a lot of maintenance that you're not going to be required to do because of this shared entity configuration. And so our last question on managing multiple entities, uh, what do companies see as a top benefit for utilizing Sage Intact for managing multiple entities? I would have to say it's consolidation. So a couple things that you know I talked about today was consolidating and not having to do that manually. There's two other reasons that I wanna cite here as well. If you want to automate the consolidation, so if you are domestic or if you are global, so today you were looking at all domestic, but let's just say that you're a company that has uh, business in multiple countries and multiple currencies. We also have the ability to do that. So if you choose, you can subscribe to domestic consolidation or global consolidation, which then automates the elimination entries. So, you know, understanding the time that you are spending consolidating data and making all of those manual transactions may encourage you to look at domestic consolidation or global consolidation. And both of these work with a multi-entity configuration. So back to your question, Allison, you know, the top reason 
is consolidation, whether it's on the domestic side or the global side. That's the main reason that people look at multi-entity as being a real uh, boost to their, their whole business process is being able to consolidate quickly, efficiently, and accurately. Because, you know, one of the things that Julie said to me was when she had to take those 11 spreadsheets, basically, and combine them all together, the chances of her making a mistake, pretty high. So not only did it take her time, but she wasn't always sure that what she was delivering was accurate. And then this is the final question that's come in. Uh, key performance indicators are something that our company would like to have as part of our reporting. How can we as, a business, as business users be able to utilize this in Sage Intact? So there's a couple ways. I talked earlier about, you know, maybe you have some, some software today that you're using. Um, I'll use a different example. Let's just say you have a point of sale system and you're perfectly happy with it. You're going to keep it. You love it. It works. It's not broke. So we're going to keep it. However, there's financial information that you want to move over to say Gentech. So we're going to do that integration. Along with that financial information, usually there is some operational information. In a point of sale system, it by, might be uh, the number of tickets, the number of customers, um, it might be the number of products. It could be lots of different pieces of information that are non-financial. And we use something called statistical accounts. So you will set up a statistical account to represent the number of tickets as an example. And then two different ways you can get that information in. You can key that in as a statistical journal entry, or you can automate that so that it comes automatically from the point of sale system in to say Gentac as a statistical journal entry. The beauty of that is we have the possibility to create a report that shows you not only the financial information, but the operational information as well. So if you want to look at, you know, revenue, um, average ticket revenue, you want to look at in, in healthcare. Uh, we look at things like revenue per patient per day. We look at the types of treatments per doctor, per uh, facility. So those are all operational pieces of information that we look at. We combine it with financial and we get a whole different view of how our business is tracking. So think about, you know, some of the information that maybe you aren't incorporating into your reports today and you'll find that some of that may be operational and we have the ability to get that in either automatically through an integration from another system or through entering a statistical journal entry, posting it, and then you have access to that data. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. And that was all the questions that came in. Okay. Thanks, Allison. Thanks, Linda. And I think I'll just add, uh, lastly, to Linda's point there, you know, I think from a reporting and a dashboard perspective, it's easy to build these reports uh, and visuals. And I think that significantly increases the visibility uh, and the ability to tailor KPIs, you know, the metrics and the financials for your different audiences internally within the company. Um, and that really changes how you look at the business. Um, just wanted to add that piece to it. It's, it's a very powerful tool. So I know we covered a lot today. Linda, do you have anything else to add to that or are you okay? I don't. I just want to thank you again for the opportunity. And I know that uh, it, when you reach out to Simon and team, that they're going to be able to sit down and kind of do that health check with you and see where you're at in your, in your journey. And if there's anything that you have questions about today that you think about later, I know Simon would be happy to, to take those questions and talk to you about it. Yeah, exactly. My information has been up on the screen there for the last minute. So you can reach out to me via email or give me a call. I'd be happy to talk about, talk about your current situation and what we can do for you. 
So again, Linda, Allison, thank you for your help and thank you to everybody joining us today. And we look forward to continuing our conversation. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everyone.